while there may be tall palm trees behind me and canal ocean water to my left, this is not a very tropical environment that we're in right now. We're just a few days away from winter solstice and it's a little chilly out. Feels like it's time for something short, dark, a little wintry and robust. And that is precisely why we are here right now. I have wisely opted for Le Bue 1922 by My Father's Cigars for this wintry day smoke. Produced at the My Father Cigars Factory down in Nicaragua, this Grand Robusto is 5.6 inches long with a fatty 55 ring gauge. It also has an Abano Oscuro Cuban seed wrapper that is grown with it in My Father Nicaraguan farm, and then all Nicaraguan binder and filler ingredients inside, which are undisclosed. It's a very firmly packed, fatty little Robusto. I love it. And I dig the orange on the footband. Nobody really uses orange nearly as much as they should, in my opinion. So, yeah, it's definitely a winner in the aesthetics department. Lots and lots of gold, too, on that uh, secondary and top band as well. And as you can see, there's definitely some oil to this Oscuro. Uh, not a whole ton, but a little bit of sheen to the wrapper. And a closer look will show that it has some tooth as well due to the amount of age placed upon it. A nice, tight, deep cup as well is very enticing to me. And while the box press Torpedo Vitola was what took the number one spot for Cigar of the Year in 2015 over at Cigar Aficionado, we here at Claro enjoy a Robusto in winter when it's really chilly out. And for y'all, that means a short Robusto. They offer them an even smaller size than this Grand version I have in my hand. So if you end up liking the looks of this review, just note that that is probably what you're going to get in the mail if you order a five pack. But yeah, it's getting a little chilly out here and the wind's picking up. So before uh, old man Winter starts swinging his schwanz around, let's get to it, huh? shall we? The nose from the wrapper is very much a leather and mild milky cocoa note. It's faint, it's sweet, it's delicate, it's got lots of cedar to it, it's got age, and it's just so clean, just like the appearance of the wrapper itself. The foot, though, is a very different story altogether. Because whereas there is still some cocoa, it's more of a dark cocoa, and it's heavily spiced in that kind of wintry spice mix that you get from, well, darker Nicaraguan tobacco. Making this puro, oh my goodness, very intoxicating on the aromatics. Raisins, craisins, little cracked black pepper, lots of Christmas spice. Ah, perfect for around the holidays. I don't know why the punch gets so much hate. I really dig the punch. I find it works typically. Pretty well, especially on these fatter ring gauge cigars for controlling smoke. Cold pulls as well, very much a dark chocolate covered raisin and a little bit of tart craisin mixture. It's very fruity and spiced. So again, think you know, spiced fruit cake, things of that nature that you would encounter at the uh, holiday banquet table. I find that this is one of those cigars that starts off on a peppery note consistently. This is not the only one that I've smoked. Uh, I've smoked one prior to this and it was the same story. Very pepper forward and spicy and almost painful to retrohale. So fair warning. Also fair warning that this is medium full, leaning closer to full than medium body strength and flavor. It's a good cigar though, because once that peppery pop right to the nostrils is over, then comes that dark chocolate raisin taste. Nice, clean, robust. Doesn't take too long for you to suddenly realize that these spiced fruitcake flavors are just part of the first kickoff to the cigar. The first third and half of the cigar is very much a tiramisu flavor. It's got a fluffy, milky, kind of bready uh, chiffon cake taste, along with cream, coffee, a little chocolate behind it. Very milky and definitely still spiced behind all of that, though. Since this cigar has a fair deal of tiramisu notes to it, you can see why I suggest a coffee, a mocha, 
hell, you smoke it in summer, an iced latte. Anything with coffee, beans, or chocolate in it is probably going to go really well with this. Even a spiced chai tea, I could see that working as well. Not into that sort of thing? Well, you might be a little hard-pressed to find the right pairing to go with it because it's just too chocolatey for whiskey and rum. Maybe craft beer. Go with yourself a nice dark Russian imperial stout and see what it's all about. The second third maintains a lot of these tiramisu notes, but it gets a little more milky on you. It's not getting lighter per se, just more creamy. And body builds a little bit as well, which kind of adds to that creamy texture that you get with the smoke from the cigar. Spice levels have died back notably as well. Uh, except if you blow retrohales, and then you're going to get a little bit of spice. It's a little more black pepper and white pepper. No red, but definitely some spice. And just like that, the Christmas spice latte suddenly makes its appearance. Which is interesting because from a moment ago it was all tiramisu. This return to the spice notes from the very first of the first third is an interesting transition because, well, you kind of are back to where you started, but now you've got a layer of tiramisu and milky creaminess right behind that. Bottom band. Oh no, damage the wrapper. How unfortunate. Something else that you will likely notice in the second third is that the cedar suddenly decides to shine. And boy, does it shine, paying a very nice compliment to the Christmas latte spice notes that are now very apparent. The cedar taste adds a little more backbone to the cigar and earthiness. And the tannin-rich spice that comes with it is unique into its own because, well, cigars are aged in Spanish cedar. Very pleasant and not something that can be mistaken for anything else within the cigar itself. Flavor is still medium full, body is still medium full, and strength is sitting squarely at a medium at this moment. Still very delicious and very clean and super creamy. Hey, ducky, 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 ducky. Tell Donald I say hi. For those of you who are into retro hailing cigars, which is most of us, this is where you're going to want to do the majority of that action. It's when the cigar tastes its cleanest and least pepper forward. And it's also just wonderful. Those cedar notes just really brighten the cigar up and make it very light and refreshing. Where the palate's detecting, you know, dark cocoa and maybe some of that coffee latte like flavor and spice and what have you, the retro hails lighten things up a little bit and give you that refreshing dried cedar aromatic and keep you coming back so that when you take your next pull it's a little bit lighter than the one previous. It's so right about where that final cigar band would normally sit that the flavor profiles of the Le Bue 1922 reach their climax and transition for one final push toward dark espresso bean. It's not bitter, but it's very, very dark. And that just completely overrides any flavor of tiramisu. The smoke itself is still milky and creamy, but whew, very much a coffee forward cigar at this moment. And that continues all the way through parting puffs. So stay tuned because we're about to get real serious for a moment here, folks. The final thirds move toward parting puffs bring it all to full. And just the lower end of full. Again, this is a medium full cigar, so, you know, you're not getting all the way into full blown, super intense Liero Oscuro here. But when it comes to body and flavor, yeah, you're right at the lower end of that full spectrum. Strength is still very much medium, medium full if you really want to you know, go for a stretch on that, but that's pushing it. The flavors though just build and build and layer and it's just this big coffee, cake, spice, palm of flavor right now. It's not muddled though. You would think it would be, but it's still tasting very clean and burning very cool. Speaking of 
burns though. I've had issues with this stick and the one I smoked prior. Where it burns cool, it doesn't want to burn straight. All the burn lines are really wavy. Touch-ups have been necessary two times on this stick, three times on the one prior, and I might have to do another one here in a moment. And the wrapper on this one continues to give me issues where the bands were. That's a problem with the glue that they add to these cigars. There's no easy pull tab on them like certain cigar manufacturers have. And so pulling them off is a little on the tricky side and you may damage your wrapper. That is frustrating for me because it shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. You should never intentionally or unintentionally damage the wrapper on your cigar based purely upon the fact that the bands are difficult to remove. Still, flavors are delicious and round and smooth and or as robust as it is at this point, very enjoyable. A smoke that you're gonna wanna smoke down pretty close to the nub and you won't have to worry about it getting too charry on you. Definitely one of the more complex Oscuro cigars that I've encountered in my day, and one of the more enjoyable transitional dark cigars that I've had all year. This earns the smoke, the Le Bue 1922, a 4.4 out of 5 stars for me personally. And that is based purely upon the fact that it's just so delicious and enjoyable and memorable and I love the banding and branding on it. Uh, the wrapper looks great. Love the deep cap. And if it weren't for these damn construction issues and the stupid amount of glue or lack of a pull tab on the bands themselves, the cigar would score a good bit higher. Also, you may note that the ash on this cigar is a little dirty looking. It's kind of got this brownish cocoa-ish color to it and it tends to flake a good bit on you as well so from an appearance standpoint that's not very pleasing and it kind of kicks ash everywhere the last one i smoked wasn't windy at all and it still was just flaking like crazy so keep that in mind when you smoke one i'd be curious to see what y'all think about the uh, short robusto we're now offering here at claro so that being said seems like old man winter is pretty much here wind is picking up I'm going to get out of here. This is Micah with Claro. Thanks for joining me today and keep on puffing. We'll catch you in the next review. Cheers.